Hi well, everybody, welcome back to part 28 of the uh, Sherman build and here we are now, it's still Sunday, this is literally a few minutes after I filmed, well about an hour after I filmed the uh, part 27 with all this texture in. So now I want to look at doing these welds around these um, lifting eyes, lifting loops. So um, something I haven't tried, you can see I haven't done it here, I haven't done it here and I haven't done it here. So this is fresh off the bat for me. And you can see my Mr. Servicer 500 has gone really, really thick. So I'm going to see if I can use this. Reason being, if we make a mess, we can just go around with the thinners and, uh, and take it out. So I'm going to put some in here and just work it into this corner. I'm not worried about where it goes or stringiness or anything because as we all know, with the thinner as we can mess with it. Now I could use filler, but the trouble is with filler, once it's there, it's there. This is going to go on here and this is going to start to dry. And I think it's going to be, be become very workable with some thinners. Okay, so there we go, there's some round there. And as you all know, I absolutely love Mr. Surfacer. You can do so much with it, and the big beauty of it is like using oils and enamels for weathering. If you don't like what you've done, you can take it all off. You can sand it, you can use some Mr. Colour leveling thinners or ordinary Mr. Colour thinners. And you can just play with it to your heart's content. You can use it as a filler, you can use it like this for modelling stuff. I mean, some people would use milliput. I've seen people use like rolled up milliput and then play with it afterwards, put the weld marks in it, but I always think it looks a bit overdone. Okay, now we're going to come to the front one where I don't think we're going to need so much because there's already some on the plastic. Get that in there like that. Slap it on. And there we go, that's in there now. Ready to be played with. So we'll put the top back on there. I think I'm going to have to put some thinners in there because that is uh, basically become a paste. Right, so let's just wipe this brush off. I'll get my jar of thinners mixed with um, Mr. Surfacer here. This is what I use for thinning the Mr. Surfacer. So I'm just going to soften the brush up because it was sort of a bit caked up with the uh, Mr. Surfacer, so I'm not, it's not too wet, I've just got it down, let's see what happens. I should be able to work this into here. In fact, I am going to put a big drop on there. Get it wet, let it soften it down. And that's something you don't want, is a bloody bristle coming off the brush. This brush is absolutely knackered. Look at it, it's like a hook. <laughs> okay, so that's got that basically pushed into shape. Like so. So what we're trying to do is just basically get the the shape we're looking for and get rid of any um, wayward lumps or bits and pieces. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat and even. A lot of this was um, sort of three or four welds, one on top of the other. So that's the beauty of um, armour modelling, overdoing cars and aircraft and stuff. You can you can be a bit more. It's a bit more forgiving. Now some say. It's easier. 
I've heard modelers say it's easier and you don't have to be so careful. But, um, you know, those car modelers out there that are fantastic at building scale engines and adding ignition leads and fuel lines and everything, yeah, they do a fantastic job and they're beautiful, but, you know, I'd like to see them have a go at doing a, a diorama or a, realistically depicting a burnt out tank. Because I know I couldn't do it. Okay, so there we go. We've got that added right there now. And that's all roughly in place. I think I'm going to have to put some more on here. I might come up with some thousand afterwards just to uh, blend it a bit. Blend that round into the round shape we're after. Okay, so now this one will be starting to go off. You can kind of push it about a bit. I'm going to get a different brush. I think that thing's had it. Right, so let's get this old brush back that we were using earlier. And I'm just going to go around. And try and remove some of the excess we got there. After all, the world's not going to be massive, but uh, and then we can just blend it out into our cast texture. And hopefully, now you can see why I did this before I added the texture. You can imagine if I did it afterwards, it would have been a lot more difficult. go. I'm happy with that. I think we got a, a lumpy welded look on there. If you want to go out with a toothpick afterwards and add some sort of weld, welds or uh, what do you call them, crowns or dimes or something they call them, isn't it? But um, you need to be careful because you can go over the top. And um, I think this one's going to need some more. There we go. So there you can see we've got our lumpy welds around the bases of them. Yeah, that needs a bit more work, that front one. Just wet it down a bit more so we can blend it. There we go. Again, I'm sorry if this is long and drawn out for you. If you've done all this before, you can fast forward. But um, there are those out there that like to see everything rather than just, this is how I'm going to do it. Bang, there it is.
there we go okay so we can let that go off now before we do anything else with it just gonna brush some more onto there where I sanded it anywhere where there's little bits and pieces of lumps and stuff you can sand it and you can see here what I've done I just broke that down a bit because it was a bit too much so I can go over that again now okay right so moving a bit forward a bit with this turret now it's all uh, it's all dry where there are areas that I think were a bit over the top I've just gone over with a sponge and just you know relieved it, re uh, reduced it a bit to get rid of the um, you know the, 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 the marks that were there and just sort of tone it down a bit so we've we've now got what I think is a nice sort of random cast texture on here um, you know, nothing too smooth nothing too rough and I'm, I'm quite pleased with how it's come out actually so um, moving forward I'm just going to do a bit more sanding there okay so moving forward I've put the um, my clear cast uh, cupola on and basically three screws inside as you can see in there uh, unfortunately because of the the hole that's in the actual inside of the turret that's molded inside doesn't line up with the hole that's on the outside so um, I've had to add some plastic in here it's not a particularly smooth turning whoops it's just broken now, there you go <laughs> so there we are it's broken that one off so there we go that's that's uh, live on camera for you so I think at the end of the day I'm gonna have to glue this on so it's not actually moving but um the only reason I really did it was partly for the clear um, vision ports but also I wanted to um, improve on the the the, the molded on um, cupola which was I think too small because it didn't come over the edge here and it was very very simplified so basically I've got this now I think what I'm going to do is glue that in place with some super glue but before I do that I'm going to have to paint inside here black or green because obviously we can see through there through the vision ports so um yeah that was a bit of a nightmare getting all that to work and turn and everything i've had to carve away the inside of this as you can see and um all to no avail there was no point whatsoever so basically um yeah clear resin it's very brittle and what it's done is snap that lug off there where the uh, where the third screw was so that's fine um not worried about that at all luckily it didn't damage anything else on here so so basically what I might do is just glue that back on just to give me some alignment with putting it back in. So moving forward, we need to look in the instructions and see what we've actually missed out. Now if we go back, go back to step 22, we're still on the hull, so we can go forward here. Now if you remember, we've done all this, we've assembled all this, but we didn't put this in. So now we need to get that, put that in the turret, and I think what I'm going to do is do all this before I paint it, because otherwise when I have got it upside down and putting all the bits and pieces in I'm probably going to scratch everything so I think what I'll do is um, do this first do this put that piece in there um, I'm going to paint all around here before I put the mantle on mantle is over here and uh, if you remember we put these discs on the sides as well so before that goes on we'll get all this area in fact what I might do is give this whole thing a coat of green um, actually before we uh, before we go any further right so that's all painted, eh? So I painted the cupola as well, masked off the um, the vision slots there. So hopefully it's all going to come out okay. Looking under there, I've got green paint on the windows. It'll scratch off with a stick anyway. So um, <clears throat> right, going back to the instructions now. This I won't do yet because if you remember, if you look back about three or four parts ago, um, I didn't fit this. This actually is the bottom part of the turret here. So which is already glued on because we want to deal with the seam. So um, basically I need to put this in afterwards. Before I need to do that I need to put in the, the mantlet and everything. So um, we've done all the work on this and we made up the, here it is, well prepared as usual, the rod. Got the rod made up there and that's going to go um, dum -dum 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 -dum. It's going to go with that way that way round it's going to go like that so we're going to put that into there like so and then this have I done that right yes and then this is going to go into here and slide onto that pivot 
and then basically the mantlet is going to glue we put this piece in here which is the, the bit the uh, the commander sits on um, <clears throat> so we've put the we've put this in here we're not gluing the barrel in yet I've got the barrel here which is all sanded and everything I'm going to glue the mantlet onto the onto the tank onto the turret and basically it glues on via these slots onto these slots here and I'm going to use some contact to glue and basically I'm going to put some on there some on there some on there and some on there I'm guessing that doesn't go down inside there well if it does we'll put some glue in there anyway so we'll pull that one up slide that onto there and then this one We'll slide onto that one, which, because the camera's on, isn't going to go. There we go. If I use my fingers inside the turret to hold them where I want them. Right, so that's going to slide into there. Upside down. That's going to slide into there. Oh dear, come on. I've done this a million times. And that's going to slide into there. There we go. So that's on now. So we can just look inside and check that it's all sitting yeah, nice and flush. And we could actually get in there with some extra thin if we wanted to. And we've got the, the man that operating freely. Remember I said you need to remove some material from here because it doesn't slide very freely. When you uh, when you move it and that mod's going to keep falling out so it can stay back in the box so there we go um, I'm tempted to put some more glue in there although I don't think I'm going to need to let's just put a drop of extra thin in there just to make sure there we go and that should help to hold that in Don't quite know what I've got on there, but managed to get something on there. So that's in like that now. Now we're going to come on. This paint hasn't dried yet. I've used, um, as you know, I'm using Mr. Color on there, and it takes longer to dry than most other paints. And then that is going to go into there, like so. I actually put the tape in the end. This tape here, if you remember, I didn't put it in. I put that in, and I didn't like the look of it, so I've cut it back. It's also not um, not wide enough. It's not a large enough diameter to go all the way around. So. Uh, yeah, a bit of a waste of time, really. So this is going to glue into the into the turret itself, and I think what I'm going to do is wrap some masking tape around it, just to make sure I get it central because it isn't a very tight fit. Now that's a nice snug fit now, so I'll take some away. There we go, that's a lovely fit now. And what I'll turn, oh no, I think I'll turn the camera off. Right, so now comes the fun part. We've got to fit this in totally out of sequence. So somehow, I can't remember how now this is going to go in and it's going to go like this. So we'll do this on camera so you can watch. This cable needs to go up through the centre here, which looks easier said than done. They're telling you to put the cables through this centre hole. Oh, it does go, it just, just goes. So, we should put that over there out of the way. So I can't remember now how I got this to go in. I think I actually put one end into there maybe I did that end in first looks like we're almost there we'll 
Mm, this is going to be fun. It's almost in there. It just doesn't look at that last tiny little bit. Mm. Maybe if I take this plastic ring off. Proves the thread lock works anyway. And I'm only keeping this camera going because if you're building this model, you probably want to do it the same way. It makes a lot of sense to do it this way. Right, so without that, that one there. There we go. Lovely. So we can now bring that up, grab one of these screws and put it onto our magnetic screwdriver. go in there and then this one why is it so tight because it's up against that cable the other thing I want to do is make sure I get this confounded bloody connector on Oh, it's come out again. It's absolutely awful, this thing. Comes out as soon as you sneeze on it. Get that up this side. There we go. I think what I'm going to do is get that on there before I do anything else. There we go. That's in there now. Bloody things are pain in the arse. So, they've got some free movement on there. Grab that screw on there and stick it in. There we go. So that's that all done. I didn't show you fitting in this um, this firing thing here because it's a bit of a pain, uh, very difficult to film. You've got to put it in, it, it, the cable goes in here, here's the cable that's going to go into the hull. Um, it sticks in with a piece of double-sided tape in the back there, which doesn't stick it at all. And then you've got this aluminium reinforced tape to hold the cable on the side. Obviously holds the cable away from this, this motor. So there we go, we've got that in there now. And I just want to make sure it's not all, it's not all snagged up on that motor, so it's going to be fine. Um, I've put that... Uh, connector on there so that the the gun will now elevate using the motor and we've now got to fit a spring there is a little spring here mk7 i've got the spring here and that is going to go into this hole here like so and then the bottom of it is going to loop loop around I've got it the wrong way around actually oh no the bottom of it he says is going to go and loop around oh no this is going to be a nightmare I'll do this off camera okay so that's that part of the turret complete put that ring back in with some fresh thread lock on the screws um not sure if they should be thread locked no, it's not telling to thread lock them. I guess when you put the tape over it stops them undoing. But I'm just going to check they are... Yep, they are nipped up nice and tight. So, right, that's that all done now. We've done all this. So we can turn the page. And 
now we're going to look at adding the detail. We've already added this um, this shell ejector hatch here. We've got to add this hatch here, and we've got these pieces in here that are all going to go on. So I'm going to go on and put those on off camera. There's no, no point in you seeing me glue them on. And then I think we're going to have to look at this seam around here and see what we're going to do, um, if anything. So uh, let me get all this done, and then I'll come back. And there we go, all done. So um, happy with that, happy with how it's come out. We got. Uh, I made some brass handles for here, so that's going to lift up and the on-off switch will be in there. Um, obviously, as you know, the screw broke on this one, so that's going to end up being glued on, but the hatch, the hatch does open. Okay, and we've got um, the periscope to go inside there, and then we can stick the commander in as well. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, you know, the gun goes up and down, but it won't go up and down now with the with the motor in the way. And over here, what I did here, I put a brass rod in this, so it's a lot stronger than it would have been. And these are actually really, really glued on well. So there were some ejector pin marks in there. So I just scraped them away and then put some, um, some extra thin over them. And now I've got to go and do a bit of research and find out all of this stuff that I've put on. How much of it is actually welded and what, you know, what we're going to need weld seams around. Do we need weld seams around here? around the base of here and uh, get that basically done but I hope you'll agree that that um, cupola but does make quite a difference in the appearance it's a lot more defined the old one if you remember was very very um, very very faint very very soft molded so uh, yeah all in all I'm uh, very pleased with how this has come out um, the seam on the back I don't know what I'm going to do yet I've looked at different pictures some have nothing there at all some have you know, great big gouges like somebody's been at it with a, with a chainsaw and others just have a little tiny seam. So we'll see what happens. So uh, thanks for watching. That's been part 28 and I'll see you all soon for part 29. Turret's basically done now, so we're going to get back onto the hull.